Rafa, we can't hear on Zoom. Yep, about okay, to start right you. now. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you, DeAndre, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for, for being here as well, the media members. Um, we'll get started with questions now. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll start with Lauren, then Jose. Hello. Yeah, I'm extremely excited. Um, you know, when I was when I was in Turkey, uh, and it was getting closer to the point of where I'd be signing. I was looking at videos on YouTube and just looking at the fans, looking at the atmosphere, um, and, it, and it looks amazing. So, um, you know, been out at the stadium for a little bit just to, you know, look around and, uh, you know, it looks amazing. I can't wait for February 26th, see the home opener, hoping everybody will come out and, uh, you know, support, support the team, um, you know, because it's a huge advantage for us if we can get everybody out there supporting us. So um, really looking forward to, playing in front of everybody and uh, very happy to be here. Next question, Jose, then Franco, then Michelle. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the necessary steps that you have to take uh, with it to kind of make it to that level, which I'm sure is one of your goals. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest thing is staying in form, um, you know, being able to stay in form, continue to be a leader. Um, I think with the national team and, and with this team, I'll play similar roles as, as far as being a leader, um, being a, one of the older guys on the team and, and leading a group of younger players. Um, so just really continue, continue what I've been doing. Um, and like you said, hopefully we'll be able to make the World Cup uh, and then I'm sure the, the work that I do here will lead him perfectly to that. Next question, Franco, then Michelle Kaufman. Yeah, one of the earliest memories that I have of Kaufman was back in 2014, the World Cup uh, yeah. round tables in Manhattan. Yeah. Um, while you guys were spread out, you were still fairly new. Yeah. You were fairly new yeah. You were starting your career. Your table was fairly empty. Yeah. Um, you were, I remember sitting there. Um, now you arrived to MLS, back to MLS, a more experienced player, a more established player internationally the club level, what kind of player is returning um, to MLS and joining Inter Miami now um, compared to the one that started eight, nine years ago? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think the biggest thing that I've improved in is mentally just becoming stronger. Um, I think that comes with anybody that gains experience. Um, you know what I mean? You, you go through a bunch of different experiences. I've seen I don't want to say all there is to see, but I've seen, you know, a lot more than I did back in 2014. So, um, you know, my my comfort zone has has been able to spread out a little bit more and I'm more comfortable in a lot different situations now. You know, I've, I've played um, in England, played in Turkey, uh, played with the national team, all of, obviously all over the world. So, um, you know, I, I've now had those experiences that, you know, allow me in different different pressure types of situations to still be calm. Um, and, you know, I think that's why here, um, you know, I'll be able to really help lead this group of young players, um, you know, because I, I know what it's like to be young and, and sometimes be under pressure. It's not easy. So, um, you know, I'm hoping I can use that experience that I had to, to really help them and, and make them the best players that they can be. Next question, Michelle Kaufman, then Felipe Cardenas. Hi, DeAndre. I'm Michelle Hello. Kaufman from the Miami Herald. I'm sorry I can't be there today. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm on a family trip. I'm I'm at a Starbucks in Jupiter right now. Okay, I hope um, you enjoy it. <laughs> thank you. Um, I look forward to meeting you in person. Anyway, I wanted to ask you. Um, you know, you're from the other corner of the United States. How much do you know about Miami, and how much of your interest in this club also was the city of Miami, the market? I want to hear a little bit about your fashion business and, you know, the fact that Miami's kind of that kind of town. Did that also attract you to uh, to this market? Yeah, I mean, there, I mean, there's a lot of reasons um, for me uh, coming here. I think, you know, a lot of the things or some of the, some things that people don't realize when you're a professional footballer, football is a big part of your life, but it's not your whole life. Um, I now have a daughter. 
Uh, she was born in September. Um, so really for the first time in my life, I'm having to make a decision, not just for me, but for a family. You know what I'm saying? So um, for me, it was, it was huge to be able to come back, be closer to family. My girlfriend has tons of family over in West Palm Beach area. Um, so she's incredibly happy to be here. I'm incredibly happy to be here. I obviously have vacationed a lot in Miami. So I love the area. Um, I love the people down here. I love the vibe down here. I love the atmosphere. Um, so when I was presented with the opportunity to be able to come here and be able to play the sport that I love, it was really a no brainer. Tell me a little about the fashion, the fashion business. Yeah, the fa what kind of, the fashion. How did you get started in that and what, what exactly is it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the fashion stuff, I've really since... I've got a little bit of money since I turned professional. <laughs> uh, you know, I really started to get into it. And, um, you know, I like to think of myself as quite a creative person. Um, you know, I, it's not just fashion. I love music. Anything that really has to do with creativity, art, um, anything like that, I, I really enjoy. It. But fashion is kind of that outlet when I just need to mentally sometimes get away from the game. Fashion is that kind of uh, that outlet for me. Um, so I enjoy really dressing up every day. Some people don't like my fit. Some people do, but it's a, you know, it's all personal preference. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at kind of starting my own line and um, definitely being in Miami where, you know, obviously fashion is a, is a big part of the city. Um, you know, again, that I don't want to, I don't want to say it was a huge factor in me coming here, but you know, it's definitely, you know, a cherry on top um, on, for my decision. Next question, Felipe Cardenas, The Athletic, and then Tom Bogart. Hey, DeAndre, Felipe Cardenas here with The Athletic. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Uh, so Inter-Miami missed the playoffs last season. I think you'd be hard-pressed to find someone that considers this team currently as an MLS Cup contender. But it's an ambitious project. It's a young project. So how much of your decision to come to Inter-Miami is about now, about the present, and how much of it is about perhaps the future for you personally? I mean, I signed four years here, so, you know, I think – in the moment, I'm obviously thinking about now, you know, we, we want to win this year. That's, we want to win every game. That's, that's the goal. Um, and if it's not, then, you know, I think you're in the wrong sport. Um, obviously there's going to be ups and downs. There has been throughout my whole career. Um, so I know kind of the ups and downs that come with it, but um, yeah, I think at this point we're focused on now, you know, I'm focused on now. I want to win. I want to win with this group of players. Um, you know, there's, there's a reason this group of players are here and if they weren't good enough, they wouldn't be here. So I'm confident in everybody that's here. Um, and from, from what I've seen in training the first couple of days, um, we're going to have a good team. We have a young, hungry team. We have a group also of experienced guys like Gonzalo and Victor and Gregore and Breck and Gibbo that and myself that can help lead those guys. Um, so I'm excited to, to see what we do this year. Thank you. Thanks. Next question, Tom Boger, then Team Booth. Thanks, Rava. Thanks, DeAndre, for taking the time. How are you doing? Uh, kind of following up on that with, with what Felipe said a little bit, but more of a <clears throat> bigger, like a macro look at, you know, why was the timing right now to come back to MLS? I'm sure if you were desperate to stay somewhere in Europe, you, you could have found say, a lower something or other. Um, so why, why, why did it make sense right now to return to Miami and MLS? Like I said uh, previously, um, Football is a big part of my life, but it's not my whole life. Um, and just having my daughter in September, um, wanting to be more around family, um, coming back to a league that's really growing, that's, that's getting better and better every year, especially, you know, since I've left it, it's been amazing to see the steps that it's taken. Um, you know, I think it was just a culmination of a bunch of different things that were put together that made this just a right time. Um, and obviously the opportunity came. So obviously if the opportunity never came, then, you know, I couldn't do it, but it was kind of just a perfect storm of everything coming together. And um, like I said before, I'm just so happy to be here. Next question, Tim. Then we'll go to Mike DiPasquale. Hey, DeAndre, welcome back. Thank uh, you very much. I'm, I'm curious, how much did your uh, relationship with Chris Henderson play a, a role in, in landing in Miami? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, Chris obviously was the, kind of the person that I talked to when dealing with coming to Seattle, um, you know, back, I don't know how long it was ago, but uh, yeah. So I have a great relationship with Chris. I've known Chris since I was probably six years old. Um, his, uh, his brother was my youth coach. So I've known him for, for quite some time. Um, so yeah, we, we had a great dialogue 
um, you know, and, and he was telling me about, you know, obviously this project and uh, just the ambition of the club. Um, and it, it seemed like a perfect fit for me. So, um, yeah, going back to your question, it was it, it was huge. I mean, Chris, Chris kind of played a vital role in that. And I, I really trust him and, and trust what he has to say. So um, I'm fortunate to be able to work with him again. And then sort of on a, on a big picture level, you're, you're obviously hoping this year ends for you playing in, in Qatar in, in November and December. Um, during your first World Cup experience in, in 14 in Brazil, the, the World Cup landed in the middle of the MLS season. I think you'd only played about a dozen MLS yeah. games before, yeah. before that. Does the fact that it's at the end of the club season this time around, does that change or how does that change any approach that you have um, toward the season, knowing that that's sitting out there at, at the end of the year? I mean, yeah, I, I've always been, I think some players would maybe try to protect themselves and, you know, I don't want to get injured and, you know, this and that. I've always been somebody that likes to live in the now. Um, I like to live in the present and whenever I'm on the pitch, I give it my all. Um, so there's not going to be any backing out of anything or anything like that. You know, I take some training days off. No, this, this is what I'm focused on now. It's the season. And then when hopefully the world cup comes and hopefully we've qualified for that, then it's time for that. Um, and then back to another season. Uh, so um, yeah, nobody has to worry about that. I'm not going to be cutting any corners or anything. It's, I'm going to give them my all this whole season. Next question, Mike DiPasquale, then Keith. Thank you, Rafa. Uh, hi, DeAndre. Mike DiPasquale, the Fox of here in Miami. Uh, Jason said moments ago, and Phil said over the weekend, that your experience with the national team brings to this club the big game experience. C can you talk about when they say that to you, what does that mean to you? Um, I think, I mean, I think it's all perspective. I think big, big game experience, for instance, if you asked me that uh, back in 2013, I'd say big game experience is, you know, playing Seattle versus Portland. You know what I mean? Uh, if you ask me that now, I'd say it's playing in the World Cup or playing Galatasaray versus Fenerbahce or, you know, what, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do, Newcastle versus Sunderland. Um, so it's really all perspective. Uh, um, but for me, just all those games that I've, that I've mentioned, all those situations I've been put in, um, they all play a part. They all, they're all part of the experience that I now have um, and experience that a lot of these players, a lot of the younger players don't have. So like I said previously, if I can, I, I'm going to do whatever I can do to pass along that knowledge and that experience that I've got from those games and the mistakes that I've made in those games and also the positive things that I've done in those games. Um, I'll try to pass it along to the younger players the best way I can to make them the best that they can be. Next question, Keith from Sky Sports, then Ian Hest. Hi, DeAndre. It's Keith here over in Newcastle. Hey, in the, in the how you doing? Good to, you, good to see you, mate. Are you okay? Yeah, you too. Yeah, good, good. You? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on, on your move. Um, sorry, much. sorry to take you off topic a little bit, but I just wanted to ask you about, I want to ask you about Newcastle. Obviously, okay. we've had a, ma a massive story here over the last three, four months with the takeover at the club. Yeah. yeah. Um, the city is just alive at the moment. Things are things are on the up. How, how have you seen it from looking on from Turkey and obviously being being in the US now? Yeah, it's exciting. It's very exciting. Um, you know, I've talked to uh, Jamal. Uh, I've talked to Dwight, kept in touch with them. Um, you know, they have nothing but good things to say, obviously. So it was a great win. Was it yesterday for you guys? Yeah, yesterday. Great win. Um, and, you know, with with Newcastle, at least from when I was there, you know how the second half of the season always seems to go. Is uh, For some reason, it always seems to turn up during the second half of the season. So, um, you know, I'm sure that I'm sure the team will be fine. Got some great players in, great transfers in. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing what the team can do the rest of the season and then seeing, you know, what is left for the future. Next yes. question, Ian, then back to Franco. Hey, DeAndre, nice to meet you. Ian Hess with the Heron Outlet. How are you? Yeah. Um, I, I kind of want to build off of what Keith just asked and, and, and the idea of what the coverage in the U.S. has been in the past couple of years, especially with the Premier League, you got a lot of attention with NBC Sports and, and with them showing the games and, and getting to, to see a lot more soccer on television, but also with the improvement in uh, MLS over the past couple of years. How much did that play a role in you deciding to come back home and, and try and, and really uh, revitalize a lot of U.S. men's national team soccer? Yeah, I mean, it is huge. Obviously, if, you know, I'd felt the the level was 
not right, then at the moment I wouldn't have come back. You know, I think just watching on for, for the last, I don't know how long, seven years or so, watching how the league has grown has been unbelievable. Seeing the players that they're bringing in, um, seeing, you know, the young players that are now, you know, building that confidence and, and leaving the massive teams in Europe. Um, you know, I was talking to Tyler Adams the other day. I was just saying it's amazing to see how many of you guys have, you know, gone to these, these huge clubs and not only gone there, but are doing big things at big clubs. Um, it's incredible to see. And it just shows how much football or soccer is growing in the U.S. Um, so, yeah, like I said, some guys are going the other way. I'm coming back. Um, you know, I think, I, again, I think the league is, is a great league and I think it's, it's obviously still growing. So, um, you know, hopefully I can be uh, a big part of the continued growth. And we'll do the last three questions. We'll go to Franco, then Mike Di Pasquale, then Michelle Kaufman. Yes. Where you were at the start of your career to where you are now, how much better of a defender do you think you are? Obviously, that's been uh, a talking point throughout your career. Yeah. Like, yeah. How you've done, how do you think you've improved in that? Yeah. Um, so, as far as the Inter Miami interests, um, I heard about it kind of in the beginning of January, um, like first week in January. Um, but obviously, nothing was concrete at that point. It's just a little bit of talk. Um, then obviously things progress to where we are now. <laughs> um, and then as far as the defending bit, um, I think, you know, for attackers, um, you can throw an 18-year-old in and they, they can do amazing things attacking. Um, you know, I think attacking is obviously you need experience, but you can also be youthful and be very good. I think defending is one of those things that with experience, you can only get better and better and better and better. Um, so for me, that was kind of always my talking point when people ask me about defending is the, the more and more I do it, the better I'm going to get. Um, I know when I was in MLS, it was a weakness in my game. Um, not only one v one, but positionally. Um, but now I think I'm coming back. Like I've said, being in a lot of different situations, playing a lot of different formations, playing different positions, um, to the point now where, um, I'm a lot more comfortable in those situations. So, um, Yeah answer your questions i think i'm a lot better defender now than than i was when i left no mike di pasquale thank you ralph again uh deandre let me ask you another question about the national team uh damien lowe said uh, over the weekend that he faced you you guys were teammates briefly in seattle yeah. but when you faced each other in Concacaf games the type of player he noticed that you were on that level is that you push guys who don't pull their weight yeah. and you have that energy I know you played in Europe, you've been on the world uh, top clubs, but do you flip a switch when you represent our country in those games and possibly get to represent our country in the World Cup? Yeah, I mean, for, for me, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't like to call it flipping a switch. I like, you know, whenever I go out for any game, um, for any competitive game, I always try to be the same way. Obviously, there's, different motivations, you know, obviously there's sometimes there's derbies, sometimes it's, you know, a game in the world cup, things like that. But I try to be as balanced as possible. Um, and that's how I try to play every game. That way I think you're getting the best out of yourself every game and you stay consistent. You know, I think sometimes if you're up for one game then you can be down for the other. Um, so I just try to be balanced. I don't like to flip switches or anything like that. It's just, you know, about playing my game, doing what I can and then pushing the guys around me to be the best that they can be. Um, And for me, I like, I like to use positivity. You know, I'm, I'm somebody that doesn't react well to negativity. So <laughs> I, I like to push guys with positivity. And, you know, if there's a mistake, it's, it's whatever, get on with it. I know I've made plenty of mistakes in my career. So, you know, especially with this group of young players here, I think that's going to be, that's going to be big um, to make them realize you make a mistake. It's, you just get on with it. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's plenty of mistakes to be made and um, that's football. So. Last question, Michelle Kaufman. Last question comes from Jupiter. Um, yes. <laughs> as the fashion maven that you are, I'm just wondering how you feel about Inner Miami's colors, pink and black, and what you think about the kit, what you think about the merchandise. And um, I think I hear through a little birdie told me you may have seen 
the jersey that has not been revealed yet. But I'm just wondering what you think of the uniform and the colors and all that. Yeah, no, I love them. I mean, I think it's already been announced that the the jersey that has been revealed is pink. So um, just telling everybody is it's a great looking jersey. Um, very nice. Definitely. If it didn't have my name at the back, I'll probably wear it out of the beach or something. But, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not going to be that that full of myself. Um, but, yeah, the black one, um, I think that's been shown also on social media. I've had tons of people hitting me up saying, yo, I need that. I need that. I need that. Um, so I love it. I think it's I think they're great looking jerseys, great colors. Um, and again, I can't wait to see everybody rocking their jerseys out of the stadium. Thank you, DeAndre. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank today. you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.